It is the riot, the Valentine's Day show. Oh, happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day if you celebrate it. And if you don't, you'd be like, shut up about it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate right. today. <laughs> then you can hate today all you want. We're just uh, uh, we're just a part of the machine. That's right. The uh, capitalist machine. That Churning can, out the that Valentine's makes, Day. Yep. That uh, has commoditized love for the sale of greeting cards. That's what we're doing. We're a part of it. Uh, in, the, in the show today... We do talk a bit, a bit about Valentine's Day. More and, about uh, the Super Bowl. but yeah, <laughs> yeah, Super Bowl comes up as well. We're probably a little more excited about that sure. than the Valentine's. But we got some good Super Bowl thoughts in. Yeah, we went over like the game last night and what everybody got to cook up and eat. We did a little bit of, a little bit of food in there, which mm-hmm. that was a, uh, a stressful thing for me yesterday. It was. Because, oh. of course, I waited to you, the last second. You hear your gym story, you do. too. Turns yeah. out that everybody... Uh, was getting food yesterday. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah! And is so that a surprise? I, to when you? I went to Sam's Club, there was all the things that I had planned in my head mm-hmm. were like out. Like were there was, I was, I was gonna do my my thing was gonna be like a shrimp platter. Yeah, oh. with the whole group bringing the shrimp platter. Uh oh, out of that, out of the shrimp platter. Oh. Come and on. then the worst part too was I I had pre-referenced it as if I'd already gotten. Yeah. it. Right. I, I, we all texted him what we're bringing, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, I'm bringing this. I'm bringing this." I'm like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna bring shrimp." And then I showed up, shrimp lips. Shrimp and people, the people texted back too. They were like, "Good choice." Oh, that, that sounds no. great. And I showed up, and I was like, "Yeah, it was. Uh, it was out. Turns out, uh, 15 minutes before the game, Dude, you there's needed, a lot of stuff." You would be like, "I'll be right back. I'm going to a coastal community to get the shrimp, <laughs> so <I'd> say, <laughs> and then I'll bring it." Yeah, we, so uh, that was tough. We did the uh, the dip, and I wanted to put cream cheese in it, and mm. so Eric went on Saturday night to like a. Gro- he went to Costco. Yeah, and he's like, "There's no." There's no cream cheese. I'm like, what are you talking about? There's always cream cheese. He's like, there's no cream cheese. So then he went to the grocery store the next day, mm-hmm. the non-Costco, yeah. and he sent me a picture so there'd be proof. That and there was, there was, it was almost all empty oh, except wow. for a few blocks of cream cheese. Yeah. And I was like, what? And I remembered, you know, cream cheese has been out since even before mm-hmm. Christmas. So how are we supposed to have our parties without shrimp and cream yeah, cheese? Yeah, no, I found my cream cheese. You did? I'm happy to let you know. I actually, everything went according to plan for mine. Yeah, no problem. i to tell you guys, I well, found it. That's great. You're due for something cheese. today for Valentine's Day tonight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Little Caesars is going to be out of crazy bread That's for right. me. <laughs> for my crazy bread bouquet for my wife. But uh, no, I, everything went well. Although uh, I, I did, I experienced what you guys are talking about with a Super Bowl party disappointment because I went to Wingstop yeah. and I put my order in for Wingstop a day ahead of time because I'm like, I'm not going to get fooled here. I'm not going to miss out. Yeah. I plan ahead. But uh, there was lots of people at Wingstop that clearly did not put in their order. I was ahead messing of time. everybody else up, and they uh, they were waiting quite Aww. quite a while for uh, for their situation. So fortunately, that wasn't me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it pays to well, play ahead. You're better than everybody uh, else. Sure Congratulations you know, on all say? your success. What That's can I say? Yeah. Well, That's yesterday we also talked about how I not even I I can't I can't even put this on myself. There's a thing that lives in my house. And tried to ruin the Super Bowl for me. Mm-mm-mm. We touched on him, but I was also thinking, as every day, you know, I started new with my my animal Jim. Yeah. And so, do I? Or I was thinking about this earlier. Do I or do I not get Jim like a little cookie for Valentine's? Oh, Day? you should. What? Yes. If you no, go, you right shouldn't. Over, oh, what are you no. talking about? He's a dog. You, hey, what do you mean? You're not going to be supportive. He's my of this. Valentine. Hang on, hang on. But if you go right over there, there's a doggy store, and mm. they have a whole bakery for dog stuff. I bet they have like a little Valentine's they do? Day cookie. Yeah, oh I'll get my dogs like little birthday cakes, which oh, are yeah. more expensive than the human birthday cakes. Like they charge a lot. But yeah, you should totally get yes. your dogs a little Valentine. Because like you think like your your parents, or at least my parents, always would get like a basket of like chocolates or whatever. Don't get that anymore, obviously, no, yeah. unfortunately. But <laughs> it seems like the right thing to do. Actually, how for nice Jim. would it be if they got Jim something? Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. <laughs> you know, listen, if they got Jim something and I didn't get anything, then I'd be upset. The like really, doggy. The grand doggy's <laughs> getting something. What about me? <laughs> but, Sometimes yeah. the dog stuff looks so good. You're like, I'll eat it too. Oh I do. God. I have went into the pet stores before and seen those little cookies. I'm like, why does that look like so enticing? Yeah. <laughs> that looks good. They have to make it look good to get you to buy it. Yeah. And yes. then uh, who knows terrible. how it tastes to the dog. Yeah, right. Um, your dog might not even like it that much, but he eats anything. I can't believe you guys are getting Valentine's for your dogs. Well, well, nothing wrong. There's I nothing mean, wrong with enough, that, It's enough work to get Valentine's for real people. No, I will say I don't do it much anymore. I used to buy like Christmas presents and everything, mm-hmm. but now that I have three dogs, Dogs. It's a lot. It's out of the budget. Yeah. Uh, except for like something small. But yeah, uh-huh. something totally for today. Uh, I would never do that. 
Well, I know Hudson. I don't love my dog. That kind of represents you and Zafira's relationship, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I Which is guess why so. you won't get her a brother. <laughs> Oddly enough, you know, I do all these special things for Jim, but I just don't feel that same love in return yeah, ever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when That's he puts on my clothes, you. I'm just like, you know, I feel like I do a lot of special things for you. But you're I'm putting not. a lot into this relationship, and it just seems like you aren't appreciating it. Aww. He gave you a present because he wants you to give oh, him yeah. a present. Oh, yeah. No, that makes so much sense. To think about no, it's supposed to be they're supposed to bring you something that they kill outside. Uh, and then yes. bring it in. He's like, look what I did, Dad. I yeah, got, <laughs> got something. <laughs> well, uh, hopefully everybody has a happy Valentine's Day, whatever you're doing for your dog. That's right. Or, or for yourself or for, or your for a special yeah. someone. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you do more for your person than your dog because <laughs> that could be a red flag. In yes. Unless that's <laughs> your special friend right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sometimes all you got is your dog. <laughs> well, uh, happy Valentine's Day. Enjoy the podcast today. Thanks for listening. We'll catch See you guys. next time. If you're looking for hot takes on the day's most important news stories, uh, you're in the wrong place. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Talking of TikTok, Nikki, have you seen the trend? It's been going on for a while, as I understand it. At least I've seen news stories about it for a little while. uh, Of people with their ring doorbells or, you know, their doorbell cameras. Sure. Asking... Uh, their Amazon delivery drivers to dance when they leave the package. Well, You've that, seen that? First off, that's awful. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, mercifully, <laughs> that has not come up in my TikTok feed. So it's not like it's in the delivery instructions, because you can leave the, delivery yeah, instructions like for Amazon. Yeah, that thing, yeah. It's just they're talking to them through the ring doorbell? That, no, uh, like in the delivery instructions, one way or another, it's telling they them are to leaving dance. the message. I don't know. Maybe some people even leave a post-it note. I don't know. But uh, however they're asking... They're asking, and uh, some Amazon drivers have obliged. But you haven't seen that come up? I've seen a couple, but I didn't know it was a trend yet. Yeah, oh, I've it's a trend. Because I've also seen, like, you know, if you're getting something delivered for someone else, you leave uh, instructions on, you know, like, throw it here, just right. to be funny. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't know it was, like, a trend at this point. Yeah, it is. A, it's a trend. A lot of people are asking the drivers to dance while they're on camera. Gosh, that means that's why my package has been late. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're too busy dancing? They're too busy dancing. You leave the people alone, let them do their wonderful job that they're doing, yeah. and not make them dance. Yeah, and uh, so that's what the Amazon drivers want as well. Uh, overwhelmingly, it says that the Amazon drivers are getting tired of... Of being asked to dance on camera uh, for the TikTok videos. Uh, They say it is increasing their already heavy workloads to be also forced to dance, at least feel obliged to dance uh, while on camera. And I get it. You know what? I don't know. What are the repercussions for not dancing? Because I would be 100%... You, I don't care what you say in the or comments. No, not I'm dancing. not dancing on the TikTok. Well, I think it's hard because you know deep down they're doing it because they want to take the video footage yeah. and post it on social media. Right. So I would feel more upset because if I didn't, then I would. They'd put me up for that. Oh, I'd and be comfortable I, with that. I don't know. I would. I, I would love to be viral, even if it as the no guy. Yeah, I'll be the no guy. <laughs> and then if I did, yeah. if they still posted you, I would just want to pretend like I didn't notice anything. Yeah. I just. I uh, no, you're definitely right. It, well, <laughs> it feels exploitative too, it right? Is, it because is. even if you do dance, you're not getting the likes off mm-hmm. of the video. You're not getting anything out of that. You're just doing your job, and so I wouldn't give. And I was gonna say it might be hard because you know the people who started it at least started this trend were probably just trying to brighten somebody's day. I know, and I hate day. people like that. Their so own stop day. it. Yeah, <laughs> they say that the drivers are in a tough spot because some feel like they might get in trouble if you're ignoring a customer request on the delivery uh-huh. and then others just you know feel like if there's a complaint for just not following oh customers God. wishes um, or if they do and then become viral mm-hmm. can they get in trouble for wasting time yeah I guess that's a good point that they, they kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place well they're uh, stuck between your house and your delivery package yeah, so right. leave them alone <laughs> this must be why yesterday uh, you ever have the situation where you get in your car and while you're still sitting there the Amazon man comes up. Oh, you don't know what to do. Yeah, because they say on Amazon, like, don't don't go near them, don't don't touch it. Oh, don't it does like, say that. Yeah, like you weren't supposed know. to do like hand to hand connection because it was just supposed to be safer. But yeah. the delivery driver always comes up and hands it to uh, you. He did not. He uh, walked right by me, even though he saw me mm-hmm. sitting in my car. But he just looked at me and he looked so 
so upset. And it's probably because he was asked to dance so many times. Because you were there? He, no, I, I, he just, I don't know. It might have been. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm day? the problem. I think it's the dancing askers that, are, that have ruined his day and mm-hmm. he's done with it. I don't know. That's what maybe, I choose to decide. Maybe he was just sad to see ya. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Super Bowl. It happened yesterday. Are we done? Are we glad it's over? Or are we? Uh, I don't know. Eh. It's a long time without football now. Yeah, that's true. But I feel like because it was later this year, like there was a couple of weeks of waiting. You think? So I, it was just good it to did, get it over with. I did. Uh, <laughs> it did dawn on me that like some of the rest of the playoffs happened so long ago. Just the sure. playoffs. Yeah. Without, like uh, they did extend on for a really long time, but. Uh, it's always it's just sad. It's gonna be uh, like last Sunday, even though the Pro Bowl was going on. Even that was weird without football. Yeah, not so, having anything. So uh, we're gonna have a few weeks where it's weird without football, and then maybe maybe the maybe we'll find something else to do. <laughs> March Madness is coming up, there so you it's go. almost there like you go. it just fills right in. And you can always watch older games. I don't yeah. know. Go back to something. But the, congratulations to Isaiah out of all of Radio U who picked the Rams yeah. to win the Super Bowl. Surprise! Over surprise! The Bowl. So when I, I saw that, I was like, all right, he won. <laughs> Do you feel good about that? Oh, I feel so good. Do you feel uh, <laughs> Do you feel any regret that Odell Beckham Jr. gets a Super Bowl win? No, I, that doesn't bother me. It doesn't. No, I doesn't bother it, I me. I I feel that I saw a lot of uh, Browns fans that feel a little salty about it. No, I mean for me, it's just like if he doesn't want to be in Cleveland, that's fine. He can go somewhere else. They yeah, won the game somewhere it's better. Okay. Hey, whenever anybody says that, that means you are. You're like he can just okay. go somewhere else. He goes somewhere else. I mean, the players change teams so much now. If you're upset when players leave your team and win, you're going to be upset every single year. Yeah, like, that's every a good single point. year, there's someone who wins the Super Bowl who is on a different team, and it was probably your team at some and point. And you'll you'll never be able to have a favorite team again because they're all going to intersect and yeah, exactly. you know, eventually that player will get around to You just got to keep cheering for the laundry and not for the players, <laughs> yep. as Jerry Seinfeld would put it. So what do we think about the game yesterday? Uh, you know, because that was the big thing. Obviously, there's commercials and other things to talk about, but how do we feel the, about the game? Was it, uh, where does it, is it a great Super Bowl game? Was it exciting the whole time? So 23 to 20, uh-huh. the Rams over the Bengals. Yep. Isaiah, what do you think? I, I was not all that entertained, to be honest. No? It was, it was, I feel like it was a solid Super Bowl. It wasn't incredible by any means, obviously, but I think the games leading up to it were so much, like, so much better. Yeah. That once it got to this game, like, there was no way that this game was ever going to top the Bills Chiefs games. There sure. was so many games sure. leading up to it that were so good, and so this one was. If it, uh, what I really wanted to happen was for it to go to overtime because then mm. it would have felt like there was uh. a little bit of extra juice. But the game overall was it was pretty bland. It was pretty defensive, a lot of sacks, and I, I just didn't. There wasn't the. There was a couple big plays, but overall, it just wasn't really that that exciting for me. That's a good point. It, uh, compared to the previous, some of the previous games we got in the playoffs. It uh, didn't quite stack up, but uh, you know, I, I'm glad it wasn't a blowout. It was close the entire yeah. time, so it was uh, it was a solid game. It kept your and en- attention the whole time. Uh, here, I had an issue with it. Can I tell you guys? Sure. That yeah. I think uh, that it's not getting talked about enough. First thing in the morning uh, is that <laughs> the referees kind of screwed it up big time, and the only reason that's not a bigger deal. Is because the two times that they really screwed it up pretty blatantly kind of canceled each other out in a way. Sure. Uh, because that the Bengals' big touchdown to start the second half, where it was a pretty blatant uh, face mask, face mask on yep. T. Higgins. That was, uh, I mean, that was egregious. And yeah. then when they get down to the end zone, uh, the Rams at the end of the 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 fourth quarter where they scored their touchdown and the officials were getting a little too happy with the flags but uh, on that one uh, what are you talking pull- about when it rained down yeah yes. right <laughs> there was, uh, but I mean the Rams very likely may have scored there either way yeah but uh, the officials almost all but guaranteed it with how many flags they were throwing there sure so yeah that, that did kind of leave too. a bad taste in my mouth yeah for sure like for me at the end when they were when they were they threw a couple flags in, in the red zone that Rams like final drive and mm. it was just tough because they hadn't called many pass interferences like the rest of the yeah. game yeah. And so when you get to the end there, but I will say, like, as if I was a Bengals fan, which I'm not, but if I was, 
I wouldn't feel too terrible about the refs because I feel like whenever you have an opportunity yeah. at the end of the game to be able to win it, which they did, yeah. then you can't like complain yeah. because they had so many chances at the end. And that final drive the Bengals had, the final three plays they ran were just abysmal. The, yeah. But Joe Burrow throwing it out of bounds, a third and one where you run it with Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, that Joe was Mixon. for sure. What are we doing? And then the final play, I mean, you give up a sack and you drop a pass and that's that's the game. Yeah, I wish uh, they would have. The play calling was rough at the end of the game. I wish they would have gone with that play earlier where obviously Joe Burrow he uses the pass rush against him uh, or use the pass rush against the Rams. And a call a play where he just runs up runs the it himself. Yeah, I you, know. I thought I was so sure, and I feel like everybody was watching when the Bengals were driving down the field at the end. I was so sure they were going to get a field goal, and then all of a sudden there was just three plays in a row where it yeah. just stopped. Like before that, they were driving right down so quick. I was like, oh my gosh, they're going to get a field goal, and then they didn't. Aww. Yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> I think everybody kind of had that same feeling, just the way the Bengals talk and everything. So. Yeah, it was surprising to see, but uh, good for the Rams. Congratulations to them and uh, Matthew Stafford getting a Super Bowl. I don't know. I feel I feel a little uh, a little off about that just because Hudson's it's, mad this morning. <laughs> I, I'm a little upset because uh, he, you know, he's uh, still tied to the Lions to me. Sure. So I don't know. I don't know. I just like I don't Your know. Your Packer there, Lions ties. Yeah, just, there's doesn't something sit right with you. Yeah, I, I mean, it's fine. It's fine because uh, you know we've got enough in Green Bay, but it's just a little. It's just a little weird. Little you hate some. him. You, I guess I still have residual hate for him, even though he's long gone from uh, Detroit, where he wasn't a problem for us anyway. So. Well, it was close for the Bengals, which I guess is probably harder because it was so close. Mm-hmm. But everything you love about the riot plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the riot podcast. The numbers are in the weekend box office Ooh, coming Valen- in. <laughs> Valentine's Day weekend box is normally a bigger time for movies. Yeah, it's it, uh, it's tough with the Super Bowl going on at the same time. The the uh, movie theaters seem to say mm-hmm. uh, that's their explanation. That and COVID-19 for <laughs> and- why these movies did not make a lot of money this there's, weekend. There's a lot of uh, they need a lot of explaining. <laughs> yeah. So number one at the box office was Death on the Nile. Mm-hmm. That is uh, Gal Gadot and Army Hammer in a Who Done It? So a did you, Agatha, Agatha Christie book so turned into a movie. That was the follow up to the Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah, do you remember? I so remember that movie. That Never movie saw it. did really well, uh-huh. and then this was supposed to follow up right after. Yeah, but this movie has been sitting, sitting. Yeah, not, not like oh, it just took this long to film. Sitting for two years. Yeah, so it uh, got pushed and pushed, and it did, and all that pushing did not help. Although it was number one, so oh, that's you can't not take a big box office. You can't though. take too much away from it, but it made a. Uh, Twelve million dollars, mm-hmm. and the problem is they say that that took ninety million dollars for them to make. So it's got a long way to go if it's going to make its that's budget the, back. That's the real mystery. Yeah, how, how will <laughs> not who did it, but like how will they make their money back? How will they? Uh, what does it get back into the black? Sure. Uh, but they do say, hey, it hasn't released in China yet. And China gave uh, Murder on the Orient Express a decent amount of money, so maybe uh, there's still a chance that it can at least become uh, solvent, well, I guess. Well, how did the Jennifer Lopez movie, because that. that's the movie I saw so many things for, it drove me crazy. Did you watch it? I did not. I did actually want to see it, just because I wanted to watch some sort of romantic movie. Yeah. Uh, just a lighthearted... Well, it's not too late. No, it's too late. It's too late? It already. Is. It's Valentine's Day. I'm not going to a theater What are you going to do to v- celebrate if you're not going <laughs> to... Not watch that. a romantic movie. And then I was you, like... N- you don't have to go to a theater. You can just get Peacock. But then I, I didn't want to. <laughs> to do just Peacock. get a free trial. No, I didn't want to. I did look at it on Friday. I thought, well, maybe, but there was other things to watch. Uh, Marry Me came in, and it wasn't even in second. It was in third in the uh, box office. Oh, that's lower than they thought. Eight million dollars. Mm-hmm. And uh, now, NBC Universal, uh, they, they're in charge of Peacock. They did say... That it was the number one title on Peacock on Friday and Saturday. Did they give a number? Uh, they did not. They didn't back that up with anything. But being number one for Peacock, uh, like I guess that's good for for the movie itself, but not good for 
not I not great in general because Peacock only has nine million subscribers, which is not a lot. It is thought. And so what is the Olympics number two? Now? Although that is like uh, <laughs> uh, what's nine? T- that's like forty five million dollars a month, I guess. So not bad. So number four was Spider Man No Way Home. That's still there. Yeah. And then number five was Blacklight with three point six. I don't know. Oh, that's the Liam Neeson one. Oh, it is. Is it? I don't Isn't know. it? Yeah, I think it is. Uh, that's sad for Liam Neeson. Well, I think he's excited just to have... Just to have a movie. Just to have something. Yeah. Well, that was probably... uh, That's the one I'm the most interested in. (laughs) Not marry me? Not marry me. That's uh, not really on my radar. Why pay for so many streaming services that you don't really care about? When you can not really care about the riot for free. Radio U. Uh, So, of course, Valentine's Day is a huge day for couples... But what about if you're single? What should you do what then for should Valentine's you do? Day? Should you celebrate in some way? I think so, if you want to. And if not, you don't have to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Even if you're a part of a couple, you don't have to either. Oh, no, don't say that. <laughs> don't say. Well, every couple is different. It depends on if it's important or not. Yeah, but all of them celebrate Valentine's Day in some way. <laughs> uh, so this is from, actually, a, a chocolatier Hotel Chocolat. Oh, I'd love to be a chocolatier. Yeah. Have you heard of Hotel Chocolat? I have not. Is it? I think, I think is, it's fancy. Is it a company? Yeah, it's okay. a company. Huh. Uh, so they say uh, they have some suggestions on how to celebrate Valentine's Day if you're single, because just because you're single doesn't mean you can't do something special for Valentine's Day. Let me guess. Are we yeah. supposed to eat chocolate? Right. By that's definitely, <laughs> that seems to come up a lot, but that's not the only thing. Uh, although, going through this, uh, see, see if it sounds almost like condescending in a way. One thing they say is embrace being single on Valentine's Day. They say that about 35% of adults are single. Yeah. So you're not alone. You're not alone. So don't worry about it. Now they say. Uh, be kind to yourself with chocolate on Valentine's Day. <laughs> right. They say rather than thinking about romance, why not focus on enjoying what you already have? Is that not condescending? Well, I don't know. I don't take it quite like that. You don't. But I'm also like, if you were single, how are you taking it? Yeah. Uh, they say th- for being kind to yourself, just set aside the day to uh, to do something nice. For yourself. That I think is awesome. Like you just have a me day today. Yeah. Well, basically the whole list comes down to doing stuff that you want to do, but that's kind of just being single anyways. Well, that's also that, a normal day. Yeah, right. You can just do that whenever. Uh, single or when not. you're in a relationship is when you need a day where you just do what you want to do. They say take yourself on out a date, uh, get your own Valentine's Day food for yourself. Yeah. And there it is. Treat yourself to chocolate. Yeah, of course. They, they hide it a few spots down the list, so it doesn't seem too obvious. But they do want you to get chocolate, although now... Uh, it'd be a little late for you to order online, but mm. you could still, uh, you know what? The true, the true single person, you know what they would do? What? Uh, they would go tomorrow and get ah, the discount Valentine's perfect. chocolate. You don't have to, you, if, if you're not uh, in a relationship, you don't have the pressure of making sure you get the chocolate ahead of time while it's still overpriced. That's 100% You can just true. wait till tomorrow. I do like this. They say, reach out to others. So if you're single, you know, reach out to your friends because maybe you could just do something. Mm-hmm. Uh, get Valentine's Day cards for your friends. You can send some treats that way. Uh, do a movie night to Tonight, non-romantic, uh, and just enjoy the day. I don't know. You're telling me uh, one of my one of my buddies gives me a Valentine's card. Is that weird? Super weird. <laughs> okay, so maybe not. If that's I not know. Your I guess for uh, for girls, they have Galentine's Day, right? Yeah. So that's a little less weird. For there's no guy in Times Day. You could do uh, so. Your team won or lost the Super Bowl. Oh, card. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> No, I don't, chocolate. Guys don't give each other cards. Oh, and I don't know? think we need to start. <laughs> okay. Well, okay, we'll I'm, take that I'm part for away. less cards. <laughs> what about the candy less and chocolate? Less cards between men and just between everybody. <laughs> candy and chocolate, fine. Okay. But it's still going to be a little weird if one of my guys, like if Isaiah was just like, hey, Hudson. Here's a card. Got you a card <laughs> and some chocolate, <laughs> some flowers. Well, if you're single today, don't worry about it. Still, they're just saying, and this is true, have a good day. Yeah. Have just a great day doing whatever you want to do. Do what you want want to do which again that's just single life mm-hmm. do what you want nobody who, who's going to tell you not to the riot promise is that they'll always have an opinion on everything they talk about but that doesn't mean any of their opinions will make sense this is the riot on radio U.
Last night, one of the ads during the Super Bowl that uh, it, it garnered a lot of attention, we can say that, mm-hmm. is the Uber Eats ad. You seem to not like it as much as I did. I didn't find it as funny, but the second I watched, I was like, oh, yeah, they're going to give us a warning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. Tell that is to not do as the commercial did. That is what happened. So the Uber Eats ad, if you missed it last night, it is uh, it's a few people. Uh, Jennifer Coolidge is one of them. Nicholas Braun, Trevor Noah, Gwyneth. Paltrow is in it, and uh, they're all, they order stuff on Uber Eats, and the question is asked, if you order it on Uber Eats, does that mean I can eat it? Because they were promoting the fact that, you know, you could just get any sort of thing yeah. delivered at this point through Uber Eats, um, and so they, they were promoting that. They eat, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow eats one of her candles, and they're oh, the eating, diaper like, one dish too. sponge. Wow. Oh, yeah, the diaper is bad. Uh, <laughs> the pencil. <laughs> sponges and, uh, and dish soap, and mm-hmm. so... Uh, with that, the United States Consumer Protect uh, Product Safety Commission felt the need to tweet out. They just said simply, do not eat soap. That's the one <laughs> That's thing they had commercial. to warn us about mm-hmm. is uh, that we're not supposed to eat soap. Uh, and But it, I actually don't think the commercial was that bad. You liked it Some more, people didn't like it. But- you know what, though? I think I might like it in part because of the, pe- and actually this would be probably be true about a lot of the commercials I liked last night. It's more that I like the people in them. Sure. Because I like the Larry David one for uh, for the crypto, you even like though. the Paul Rudd one. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Idris Elba one, that was a hit. All the ones with people I like, and Jennifer Coolidge and uh, Nicholas Braun, Cousin Greg, they're both, they're goofy. They're just goofy people, or at least they're good at acting goofy. But you like that, but you got to re- realize, um, I can be easily swayed, so what if I drink Yeah, soap? that's right. <laughs> they're they're the being too goofy for too us goofy. dumb Americans, right? Yeah, but like I said, the second I saw the commercials, like, oh yeah, someone's going to follow up with this to remind yeah, us not sure. to eat a candle. Well, the other funny thing about that commercial is that, uh, although I did like it, and it's a 30 second commercial, or I guess it's one minute, maybe. I don't know. But uh, either way, surprising that uh, even me liking it, it went on too long. Yeah. <laughs> like the point is getting, has gotten across very quickly. And somehow the commercial just continues on and on and on. Well, I like someone's tweet about it. It's a rare combo of being a good ad that also makes me want to throw up. Yeah. <laughs> well, is it good, though? Because I'm not going to go order on Uber Eats. Well, at least For stuff that I'm going to eat or not eat. So. Yeah, that's all right. They, but it did get my attention. Listen, they understood they probably wouldn't get you anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to The Riot, where you listen to us and uh, that's it. It's pretty much a one-way street. The Riot. Radio U. You know what I haven't asked you in a while? What? How's Jim doing? We haven't, <laughs> we haven't heard about him. Jim, his dog. Yeah, Jim's, Jim the dog. That's Jim's right. been pretty good as of late. In the last like month or so, I mean, the main issue we had for a long time was the whole like pooping, peeing in the house thing. <laughs> yeah, causing that's an issues. issue. You know, for dogs, that's that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's like one of the big things. That once you figure that out, then it's pretty You're cool. Yeah. So Jim hasn't done that in like a month. Fantastic. Incredible. Ever since I put him in the crate, he's been so good. Good. For every other dog, it's yeah, exactly. a month is nothing. Exactly. But for Jim, it was like he was averaging like 1.6 poop slash peas oh, in the house no. a day for like every day. <laughs> and so now that he's in the crate, he's been so much better. But when you're not home and yes. he's in there, yeah. Yes, of course. And so, but, but. Whenever there's like a big event, you know, like the Super Bowl, you're running behind. All of a sudden, there always has to be like a little slip up that's in the way. Uh-oh. And so yesterday, I'm running around trying to get things ready for the game. Of course, I'm running behind trying to get to a friend's house. And I get home and I'm letting Jim out of his crate uh, because I'm, I'm getting ready to leave. And so I'm trying to be quick. I open the door to my bedroom yeah. where his crate is. He is not in the crate. Oh, did he, he get out? He has escaped from the crate. I have no idea how, but he has also figured out how to open my closet door. Oh, no. I don't, yet again, I don't know how, but my clothes are scattered <laughs> everywhere across my room. Oh, every, no. Almost every single article of clothing I have is just scattered across the room, but Jim doesn't like tear it up. He just likes to like pick it up, drag it, drop it somewhere Aww. else. Yeah. So it's everywhere across my room. That would be bad enough. You know, if that was right. the end of the story, that'd be, that'd be bad enough. But he not only dragged it across my room, but my clothes are covered no! in Jim poop. Oh, no. He had pooped all over 
my clothes. Dude, Jim is trying to send you a message because him running around with your clothes, like that's your smell and stuff. So yeah. he probably misses you. But then him pooping on it is yeah. telling you something. He's like, you know what? And so then I'm obviously I'm like Jim, and he's he hasn't seen me in like a couple hours, so he's not he's not like sad. Sure, he's excited. He's hyped up. He's like, Dad's home. Let's rock and roll. He doesn't remember what he's done. No, and so then I'm like, Jim, are you are you kidding me right now? I'm like trying to leave to get ready. I'm cleaning this all up. So I put him out in the living room. I'm cleaning it all up, right? And then so I put it, throw it all in the washer right away. I'm yet again running behind for the Super Bowl, trying to get there as quickly as I can. So I put Jim outside to go to the bathroom. And in my backyard, it's not fenced in. It's just I hook him on like one of those stake things in the ground. I hook him in there. So I, I go outside to let him back in. And typically when I, when I unhook him, and he'll, he'll just walk back in the house. Yeah. Like, no big deal at all. He'll I'll say, go home, and he'll go home. Yesterday, for whatever reason, causing issues, I unhook him to go back in the house, and he stares at me. Uh-oh. And when he stares at me, Uh-oh. I know He's I am in trouble. It. He just darts. He starts uh-huh. sprinting around. I'm like, no, Jim. I'm like, you just pooped in the house. There's poop everywhere. I'm like, I'm running behind, trying to get him. So then I'm running around chasing him outside, and it's like slick out there. I finally corner him. And then he knows he has no other way to go but to go through me. Uh-huh. So he runs into me. I go try to grab him. Fall, fall down on the ice. No. I turn, and then I'm, ye- I'm yelling now. The neighbors <laughs> are hearing me yell, yelling at Jim. I'm just like, whatever, whatever. I go inside. I'm like, hopefully he's still out there when I come back out. And I go and grab some treats. And that was the end of that. Uh, uh, but uh, so yesterday, that's good. Jim Reward was in for his bad behavior. Precisely. So I was like, Jim, get in here. And I hold the treats up. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, I know how to go home. Oh. All of a sudden. He and so that was Jim's uh, Super, Bowl, Super Bowl story yesterday. So when you let him back. In when you led him back in with the treats, did you actually give him any? Heck no, I didn't yeah, give him a treat. All right, all right. That's no good. chance. That's he just good. pooped That's on good. everything. And he was, this is how bad he was. He was supposed to go to the Super Bowl party. He got, invi- he got invited over because they had dogs there as well. Yeah. He did not get to go. Oh. Jim was grounded last night. He stayed at the house and said, You know what, Jim? You want to break out of your crate? You want to put yeah. my clothes? You want to knock me down outside? You get to hang out here tonight. Ah, it's a like, solo night for you. I like how like your dog doesn't know. It's like, did I just get grounded? Your dog has <laughs> he has no, no idea. idea. Now, he didn't even know he was going over there. In the first place. I do have to question. Aww. I have to go back to the idea of Jim somehow got out of his crate and somehow opened the closet door. What are the odds that you just left both of them? I'm telling right you, I did not. I would never. I would never. Hey, it's too soon to bring that up. Yes, this was not I my fault, Hudson. I think we all know it was his fault. I feel like that's a really reasonable explanation. I The closet door, like, that is very easy for him to open. So he oh. can pretty much open that whenever he wants somehow. And yeah. so, it's but his the, nose. But the crate... I don't know how he escaped from the crate because it's double locked. Like it's, I, I take my time making sure he's in there. Yeah. But I don't know. Yesterday, I mean, yet again, he's a gremlin. He's a squirrel. Listen. He just figures out how to get out of places. Jim had to get out of the crate because he had to go to the bathroom. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's right. He <laughs> couldn't hold it anymore. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Come well, on, Dad. I just want to be, I want you to film every time you go home. I just oh, my want, gosh. I just uh, want you to make a little clip every time just to show what it's like to walk in with your dog. You yeah. have a security camera for your backyard and everything. <laughs> I, so need, to, I need to get one. Around. <laughs> so you guys can see, because when I open that door, Jim just, I mean, obviously clothes everywhere, poop everywhere, just looks at me. <laughs> and I'm just You're like, home. dude, well, are you I don't want to go into the poop and clothes room either. Yeah, so. he's looks at me him. and he's jumping up on me. I know he has poop on his paws. He's Aww. jumping up Aww. on me. I'm like, Jim, get down and get the heck out of here. Well, remember, you do that again, you're not going to the Super Bowl party. Yep. <laughs> no parties for Jim. Homebody <laughs> is. Someone got grounded. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. We have here a woman in the UK uh, this is, I don't, you know what? It's in the UK. Yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> Wiltshire. Yeah. What Have is, you not heard of Wiltshire obviously, before? Yeah. Is that adding to, <laughs> you know, for anybody that's like, oh yes, Wiltshire, of course. I always love when we have UK stories because like the towns are so British Yeah, sounding. right. Uh, and of course, I mean, that's why. Now, so in, uh, let's say Wiltshire in the UK, we have a woman. In Dorset. Who <laughs> climbed up a tree uh, 18 feet above the ground, and that is where she got stuck. In the tree? She got stuck in the tree, 18 feet high, and so the uh, firefighters had to come, you know, like they would do for a cat. 
Yeah. And get her out of the tree. Well, what was she doing in the tree? She was trying to uh, actually rescue her bird. Aww. Which, I don't know, is rescue the right word? Her bird flew away. She had a parrot, <laughs> and uh, it flew into this tree, yeah. and so she was trying to chase it down. Maybe the bird had a good reason to fly away. Well, maybe it didn't want to be near her anymore. Sometimes I thought, too, like, if you, maybe your bird is, you know, there's a difference between the bird has moved into, like, an indoor lifestyle, uh-huh. so you can't just let it out. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you're like, oh, it's a bird. Let it be free. It right. might not remember no. how to be that type of bird. Well, there's probably a good reason, too. There's, I, that As far as I know, there's not uh, parrots that just are native to the UK, you know? Sure. Uh, it would be pretty out of place all, all on its own. <laughs> the but then again, like- parrots are pretty, like... I would think the parrot would probably be able to be pretty resilient on its own. Like, I wouldn't worry much, as much about predators. It depends. But, it w- but where would it find its food? The bird would be like, where's my food bowl? Yeah. <laughs> where are my pellets? So the <laughs> Wiltshire Fire and Rescue Services would like to remind you that they understand the emotional attachment we have to pets of any species. Mm-hmm. But take this incident as a reminder of the danger posed by attempting to rescue them without calling for help in the first place. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I get that you would want people to not climb trees to try to rescue parrots. Mm -hmm. But then again, the difference between uh, a parrot and a cat is the parrot can just fly away. So I would understand. I understand the woman's point of view of. I need to climb up there and get the parrot myself because if I call the firefighters, it'll be too late. One, it might not be a very high priority. It's just a parrot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and two, two, uh, I, I need to get up there. Like it might fly away before they get here. So uh, I understand why the woman would want to climb up there, but really, that just is uh, another reason that I think you shouldn't have a bird as a pet. <laughs> That's the number one. <laughs> yeah, was it in the podcast intro? Last week, we talked about that. We talked about how I think birds are terrible pets. They are difficult. And for this, also remember, good on her for getting 18 feet up. Yeah. I don't think I could get it that high. If you do get up 18 feet, sometimes it is harder than you think to get down. Oh, 100%. Which is why she got 100%. So uh, the lesson learned is. Do not have a bird as a pet. I think that's number one. Number two, yep. don't try don't to climb, climb trees, trees unless you're a child. <laughs> no, no, not even a ch- that. Well, children can climb trees. <laughs> Why you go send? They're much more agile. <laughs> you send like a neighborhood kid. Like, will you go up and get my parrot? <laughs> what do you think the age age cutoff is for when it's appropriate to climb a tree? Um, I twelve. Think, no, I think when we were younger, we didn't know the, the dangers, dangers of things. Yeah, but how many people do you know that ha- that gotten terrible tree climbing incidents? Well, I just never, I mean, at this point. You never see that in the news? No, we were all. I mean, all, we're, this is the worst thing I've ever read about tree climbing. Listen, we were all indoor children, uh-huh. so <laughs> I didn't go out to play with so trees So you're anyways. saying nobody should climb a tree. That's what I'm saying. I think 12, 12 feels generous. It was hard to do that when you, I mean, I was busy playing Nintendo already. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it's more fun to climb a, a virtual tree. Yeah, than a real one. Yeah. <laughs> The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Happy Valentine's Day to you both. Uh, to well, you as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, Isaiah, come on, just yes, say it back. Yes, of course, I know. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, Hudson. thank you. I'm glad somebody wished it to me. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I know. We'll let that be. We'll let that slide for now. Um, what would you guys like for Valentine's? For Valentine's Day? I'm not going to get it for you. Oh. But if I did, mm-hmm. if it mm-hmm. wasn't already Valentine's Day, if I was asking this question on Friday, what would you say? I always say because I'm more, I guess, practical. Uh-huh. Do not waste the money on flowers. Okay. Because those are so overpriced. Yeah, my wife but says the same thing. The the other bad side about that is now balloons are so overpriced, too. But I would <laughs> Balloons oh, I are love, always overpriced. I love just getting a big thing of balloons. Yeah. A big thing of it. A okay. big old balloon. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have pinned Nikki for balloons. But I you know really? what? No, she loves balloons. You know I'll take balloons. All right. It's showy enough because everyone will notice. Yes. But yeah, it's really fun because you can take them home. Until the one time one of my cats ate some of the uh, the balloon string and had to have like a massive <laughs> surgery to get oh, it removed. Oh, no. <laughs> so Jeez. I'm going to say that tempered my yeah. balloon love, but I'd still like that the most. Isaiah. Remember that for Friday. Oh, you got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Mark that I, down. I Nikki's that, birthday is coming up. That is hard, too. My, my birthday is actually on Saturday, but we're yeah. going to be celebrating on Friday. And so I never wanted to ask for too much on Valentine's Day because then it's a quick turnaround yeah. Yeah. until my birthday. So what do, what do you, uh, by the way, I have a, I want to hear your answer, but I have a survey here 
that is what people want for Valentine's Day. To be left alone? No. <laughs> Balloons is not yes. even on the list oh, whatsoever. It's not even an option. It didn't Whoa. make the no. top of the list. I, I feel like mine, if I had to pick, mine would be one of two things. Either like a homemade dessert. Ooh. I love a good dessert. So I'm really asking you a lot of somebody. Yeah. A, a little bit of homemade dessert or just like a, one of the assorted boxes of chocolates where you don't really yeah. know what you're getting. Mm. You like that? I do. See, I do you're like a picky those. eater. I thought you would not like I know, but with chocolates, you can't really go wrong. Unless no. Oh, but, yes, you can. But it can't be it can't be dark chocolate, though. Uh, there cannot really? be any dark chocolate in the box. If it's all milk chocolate, then I'm, I'm fine with whatever. Well, it's funny that, that, that you mentioned right. that. Yeah. It's funny <laughs> that you mentioned that because I also have here uh, the preferences of people, white chocolate, milk chocolate, or dark chocolate. Mm-hmm. Turns out 49% of the uh, population is with you. Milk chocolate is the oh, way to go. 49, okay. 49. Mm-hmm. 34% prefer dark and only 11 prefer white chocolate. Now, as far as uh, what are the most popular Valentine's Day gifts, a card comes oh, in at number one, per, uh, number one on the list. Likely story. Don't Nobody's even picking bother. card. Don't even bother. What? You guys don't want cards? No. If are you joking? If you're early enough in the relationship, maybe. But if you've been together for a bit, don't bother. I think a card no. feels like uh, a, the bare a minimum. A waste of money. <laughs> That's yeah, what it feels it like. It is, yes. but isn't all of the stuff on Valentine's like a waste of money? But at least there's something you can enjoy. You can enjoy chocolates. You can enjoy like a dessert mm-hmm. or a good meal. A card, there's like a three-second enjoyment factor. It's like reading it. Maybe there's a joke inside. Maybe it's something cute. But at the end of the day, if you put card, it's like the same thing as being like, really, for, for Christmas, I'm just happy when the family gets together. <laughs> for Valentine's Day, I just want to spend time with you. Like, no, that's not what you want. You want the chocolates. You don't want, just want a card. That's you not how it works. The only thing, but I think a card is the bare minimum. 30% of people wanted a card. Well, what's that? What other options do we have? You better not just come with a card either. If you show up just carded in, I then think card, you need something else. Card, see, I'm sa- telling it's you, nice bare addition. minimum. A card only, probably not a great look, but you have to have the card with something else. Fair, that's fair. Uh, Get a little topper, okay. but no, unnecessary. Number two. Nice dinner out. That'll that'll do. I, I approve. I'd, I'd go for a nice dinner on Valentine's Day. Uh, number three, chocolate or candy. Good. Fair. And number four, flowers. Oh, those are so expensive, guys. Yeah. Don't, don't do it. They're just going to die anyways. That's a tough like one, right? Like the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like when you toss the card four seconds after you get it. The flowers actually last longer than the card, if you think about it. Uh, let's see. Near the bottom of the list. This is, this is interesting because I... If you look on like lists of what Valentine's Day gift should I get, mm-hmm. uh, sometimes what you'll see come up is coupons to do household chores and whatever. Yeah, that's the lowest thing on the list. That the is? least amount of people it want made the list though. Your usual household ch- uh, chores and work taken care of for you. Yeah. So if your uh, significant other usually does the dishes and you're like, for Valentine's Day, I'll do the dishes. Nobody wants that. I used to have a a few friends who would do that to where for their boyfriends, you would go and clean their apartment for like, you know, the Valentine's (laughs) Day gift or something or Mm. a birthday gift. So that's fine. That really feels like more of a gift for you, though, than it does for them. They probably didn't even mind. They didn't even mind. They're comfortable living living in it. If Isaiah is comfortable living in his room with (laughs) poop and clothes all over the floor. (laughs) Doesn't bother me. Who's who? What is it? To any of us to go clean it. Okay, good point on that. Uh-huh. But if you go do that with a nice card and some chocolates, yeah, I guess you're okay. Yeah, and then okay. take them out to dinner. You're perfect. Yep, that's all good. So, uh, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Hopefully, you have your day planned. And remember, we said it before, if there's nothing to do today, then that's fine, too. That's right. No it problem. can just be a regular day, generally. Nobody's, nobody should complain. If your relationship can't handle that... Uh, then it can't. Then it's not a good relationship. That's right. Right. You've made it all the way to the end of the worst of the riot. This show only exists because of support from listeners like you. Find out more and help out at radiou.com/donate.